If you know me, you know that I really love difficult platinums. But for my 60th platinum, I decided to treat myself and tackle an easier game. I won't lie, Untitled Goose Games Platinum isn't very tough, but it really is a fun game where you get to cause a lot of mischief as a goose. And to be honest, there was definitely some surprising difficulty towards the end. I think I, I, think I basically have no shot on this run. And I couldn't help myself, I needed to add a little bit more difficulty, so I decided to platinum this game in one sitting on stream. So you might notice that I get slightly more unhinged as this video progresses. Man, how long have I been? I'm at four and a half hour, uh, four hours now, I think. Hopefully we'll get it in six. So let's get started. Step one of the Platinum Journey is to complete the main game. Untitled Goose Game plays like a puzzle game. You'll be placed in an area that has various objectives that you need to complete. For example, in this first area, you need to avoid this gardener as you cause chaos around his garden. You need to drag his rake into the lake, sneak food out of the garden to host a picnic, and other small tasks like that. This zone is pretty easy, but it exists to teach you the mechanics of the game. You really can't do all too much as a goose. You can pick up items, honk, and spread your wings. But the real joy of the game is learning how NPCs interact with the chaos that you cause. If you steal the radio, it starts playing music, and the gardener will track you down. If you honk just at the right time, the gardener will hit himself with the hammer when repairing the sign. Future zones will get more complex with multiple characters interacting, so I really like this first area that lets you experiment with causing havoc for this one poor gardener. We'll get a trophy for finishing every task in the zone, so here I am working on the final task. We need the gardener to put on his sun hat, so I need to find a way to snag the hat he's currently wearing. By plucking this flower, we can get him to bend over and give us access to his hat. After running away, he decides to put on his other hat, and we get our first trophy. Hey! Good, he put on his other hat. Thank you, gardener. The next zone in the game is High Street, and this zone features a few more NPCs. There's this boy who's absolutely terrified of the goose. We can scare him into the phone booth and then sneak into the TV station when he calls for help. Done. Look at that. The right side of the zone contains the shop with this shopkeeper. One of the tasks that you need to accomplish here teaches you how to trick NPCs into interacting. If we grab the boy's plane and put it with the toys in the store, you will have to buy his plane back from the shopkeeper. All in all, this zone was also pretty easy. The last task that we need to cross off our list is putting different items into this shopping basket. We spend some time distracting the shopkeeper and nabbing different items when her back is turned, but the last item we need is a toothbrush. And after looking through the shop a bit, I couldn't find it. I decided to explore the final part of the map and found a toothbrush in the trash. I don't think I would really want to buy this, but luckily it still counts as we put it in our basket and get our trophy. Nice. All right. The third area is definitely the most complex yet. We have two neighbors that share a fence and will have to bring lots of items back and forth, which generally makes them very upset. This guy breaks her fancy vase, and they yell about it for a while. She cuts his rose, and they yell about it for a while. Take note of the amount of times these two want to talk with each other. This will be very important later on, and it gets to be very annoying. The last puzzle that I needed to figure out was how to take off this guy's shoes. I got one of his shoes off very early when he was reading the newspaper, but I couldn't figure out how to get the second shoe. For whatever reason, this was the hardest puzzle in the entire game for me. The answer was just patience. I had to wait for him to start drinking his tea. When he drinks tea, he lifts his other foot, which gives me the opportunity to sneak in there, grab the other shoe, and got get him. the trophy. The fourth and final area of the game is the pub. Lots of fun tasks to achieve here. Maybe my favorite one is performing for these two women. They're really the only NPCs in the game that seem to enjoy the goose's presence and award me with a flower once I perform for them. We're also a menace to this old man, causing him to miss his dart throws and fall on the ground when playing the harmonica. The last task that we need to complete in this zone is getting a bucket to fall on the bouncer. This one was definitely a little bit more intricate. First, we need to cause a mess with these tomatoes below the bucket. And then once the bouncer is lured all the way to the back of the pub, we can run all the way around to the top of the bar and knock the bucket on him. Boom, the pub. After finishing the pub, we gain access to the miniature village, where we can destroy the bell tower, grab the bell, and take it all the way back to the start of the game. We have to run past almost all of our NPC friends on the way, and they're pretty upset about the bell being stolen. The farmer even manages to grab the bell right before we're able to slip out of the garden. But eventually we steal it back and make it all the way back to the start of the game, get a trophy, and see the credits roll. With the main game out of the way, the next step is to complete a second list of objectives that unlocks after beating the game. We'll get a trophy for each one of these objectives, so I'll only show a few here. A lot of these tasks involve bringing items from one location to another. For example, we need the gardener to buy back an item from the shop. So we steal his trowel, kite him all the way to the shop, and make him buy it back from the shopkeeper. Another good one was dressing up this bust with three items outside of the backyard. We grab the farmer's hat, the boy's glasses, and the old man's harmonica. I'll fast forward here as we knock out the rest of the items on the extended to-do list and get a lot of trophies along nice. the way. Nice. 
Nice. By this point, I had been playing the game for about four hours, and we only have one more step to getting the platinum. Speed runs. For each of the four sections of the map, you need to complete all of the original tasks before the bell tower rings. You have about six minutes for each of these zones. The first two zones actually weren't that bad. The gardens took me two attempts. The first time through, the gardener had an eagle eye on all his food and kept getting in my way. Okay, that was not horrible. I probably did not miss it by that much. We gotta get that radio done, like, first. But after one reset, I had a pretty solid second run and was able to complete the second speed run with time to spare. Yes. Is it done? Okay. <laughs> that seemed very close. The second zone with the little kid and the shopkeeper was definitely the easiest of the four. I beat that speedrun on my first try without too much trouble. There they are. Okay, good. Hey, okay, very easy. But the third and fourth zones were legitimately difficult. These zones were so tough because some of the NPCs took so long to start their routines. We'll take a look at the pub first. The most annoying NPC in the pub is the old man. Like I said before, there are two items on the list that involve him. You need to honk at him when he's throwing darts, and you also need to pull the chair out from underneath him. Both of these tasks are pretty easy, but you have to wait around for him to begin his routine. So I would have these runs where I completed one of the two tasks, and then ran around doing other things waiting for him to start the other routine. I have a couple of really close runs. In this one, all I need to do is get up to the bucket to drop it on the man, but the bartender gets in the way. Let me go, let me go, let me go. I'm a little bit too slow, and he fixes all the tomatoes before I can get there. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, I was too slow on it. Need to go mess up the tomatoes again. Here's an example where I missed the cycle on the old man by about five seconds. He's already playing his harmonica when I get down here. You can very faintly hear the bells in the background letting you know that I ran out of time. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, so close. Dang it. Like, 30 seconds away? Uh, 10 seconds away? So brutal. Here's one where I miss a dart throw by about 2 seconds. All we need is darts. We just need this dude to throw a dart. Oh, I missed it by like a second. But finally, I have a really good run where all I need to do is finish setting the table. I need to steal a knife and bring it down to the lower section. It's gonna be close again. I gotta put the knife and the fork on the table. I kind of freak out here as I'm rushing to set the table and I knock over the salt shaker. I'm gonna have to put that back up on the table to get the trophy. Oof. Oh man, okay. Very close. Let's listen for the bells. I was so glad to get this one done. It turns out I had a bit of spare time. I had maybe 20 seconds, but still a very tough trophy. So it's off to do the final speed run in the game, the back gardens. Yeah, kick me out. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> the back gardens is so tricky because these NPCs get distracted by so many different items. Here I'm just hoping that the woman notices these glasses that I'm bringing over so she can put them on the bust. Towards the end of this run, she needs to pick up this pipe and put it on the bust, but all she cares about is picking up her clothes. Oh my god, she's doing the clothes. Uh, there's the bells. On the other side of the fence, one of the trickier objectives is to bring all of the clothes into the pool. But the issue here is that if the man sees any of it, he's going to become obsessed with throwing it over the fence and not do anything else. I was so close on this run, all I needed to do was sneak one of his shoes down into the pool, and I would have the trophy. But he spots me, steals the shoe back, and ends up ruining the run. Here, you care. You care a lot about this paper. I try distracting him with the newspaper and go for the second shoe, but I'm not fast enough. I don't quite know what I was doing wrong, but I really found this to be quite challenging. Oh, man, there's the bells. It was so close. That was a great run. That was it. Ugh. Ugh. Very close. You'll see I get more and more frustrated as this goes on. Oh my god. This is not even close this time again. Ugh. Finally, I have a really good run, and there's only one task left. The woman needs to put the last piece of clothes on the bust. That's all we have. Yes, come on. 
What else do you need? Yes, go, go, go. Oh my god, please. I'm praying that she focuses in on these glasses, picks them up, and gets it done. Way. Do it. Yes. <laughs> I was super happy to get this done with. It was definitely way trickier than I expected. That was very difficult. A reward is waiting for you back home. Let's go get a reward. Wow, and there's the there's the bells. I got it by like three seconds. We celebrate by going back to the beginning and putting on this crown. I've posted my entire six hour playthrough of Untitled Goose Game if you want to see more. And if you want to see other Platinum videos, please give me a subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.